Welcome everyone. My name is Chris Dutzel and I'm the Director of uh, Customer Community and Engagement here at Rolteo. Today we have Gaurav uh, Guerra. He's a Senior Product Manager here at Rolteo. And we also have a special guest, Tom Esposito. Did I say that right, Tom? I'm terrible at names, but... Um, Esposito, it's fine. Ita Italian is not my main, my main language either. <laughs> Esposito, my bad. Associate Director and Partnerships at, and Alliances at Moody Analytics. Um, and today's show is Enrich Your Data with Bureau Van Dyke Integration. Um, as usual, keep yourself on mute. Ask the questions in the chat. I'll make sure to ask them during the show. Um, and then the show will be recorded and with the PowerPoint and shared out hopefully sometime this week. Before we do get started, one other thing is today we have um, a show uh, and we're very excited about. And we have two shows coming up and one or two more that I haven't added to the calendar yet. But on in April 14th, we have an Ask Me Anything with Manish Sood. He's our founder and CTO. So more to come on that. You'll be emailed. Uh, some really, We're going to have some really cool swag. It's going to be uh, some community swag. So certainly excited about that. And another exciting show that we're going to have is Empire Live. We'll be um, speaking about business benefits of the RELTIO MDM platform and show you and, and talking about some of their business outcomes that they get, you know, using MDM. So without further ado, I'm going to give this over to Gaurav. Gaurav? Thanks, Chris. Um, I'm sharing my screen now. Uh, you're able to see the presentation. Yes. Yep. Um, yeah, great. Thanks. Um, hi, everyone. This is Gaurav here. I'm a, a senior product manager uh, in the product management team here at Relgio. Really glad to be presenting our newest offering, um, Enrich Your Data with uh, Bureau Van Dyke Integration. Right? And uh, we also have uh, Tom, who will cover some of the details around you know, Bureau Van Dyke, and we can ask questions um, around the, the integration as well as the partnership as well, uh, if, if you like. Right. Um, so moving on, you know, so why why are we doing this, right? I mean, but what are the challenges uh, that we see in the market? And, and let me just cover uh, that a bit. And then, you know, we can, I can cover the solutions as well as the, the, the demo, right? So as we know, organizations today um, collect a colossal amount of uh, data to garner insights and, and make those better uh, decisions for, for business growth, right? Uh, however, gathering that data, uh, you know, leads to a, a lot of inaccurate uh, data, having gaps as well as you know some some sort of outdated data as well, and and this becomes a bottleneck for companies that want to understand their their customers, the audience better to formulate right products and services uh, to be offered to them. Therefore, relying solely on in-house information might not be enough for companies to differentiate themselves in the uh, competitive landscape and in the market, right? So the success of any customer-based um, strategy uh, depends on that complete, current, and the correct uh, current customer information. Incomplete, inaccurate data results in poor planning, ineffective marketing, incorrect sales alignment, uh, you know, inaccurate uh, inter uh, in interactions, uh, that may result in, in lost opportunities, inaccurate discounting, erroneous credit information, um, as well as you know, poor customer experience. So as a result, organizations today collect data from multiple sources to enrich uh, their existing information and to, to offer better customer-oriented uh, services. And data enrichment helps organizations transform that pre-processed data into a comprehensive profile that can support data analytics uh, and, and get that in-depth insights around, uh, around that data, right? And there are uh, solutions that we provide. And uh, for that, we, we have partnered with, with uh, Bureau Van Dyke, right? So data enrichment here refers to the tools uh, as well as the processes to improve the quality of data um, coming from any number of um, sources. You know, it's a crucial element to achieve that true 360 degree view of, uh, of your customer data or any kind of uh, profile or domain for that matter. 
right? Cleansing and streamlining that data can lead to uh, you know significant operational and customer related benefits. Um, you know, as you can identify uh, incomplete, inaccurate, irrelevant data and modify or delete wherever necessary to give you that uh, you know accurate view of the customers. However, by integrating with the third party sources, you know, for example, Bureau Van Dyke over here, you can enhance and refine your data even further. Um, right, and and with this intent. Um, Relgio has partnered with Bureau Van Dyke to deliver that trusted organization data, uh, you know, by building an integration with their industry-leading uh, business data product, Orbis. Um, and thanks to Bureau Van Dyke's database of more than 425 million companies, this integration helps businesses to learn more about their customers' firmographics, technographic, as well as demographic information. And, and offering that uh, relevant insight into customer engagement, um, as well as you know, uh, you know, support the upsell as well as the cross sell uh, into that broader customer uh, organization. Right. So, having said that, I would now invite Tom, uh, who can you know cover a couple of slides and give you some more details about uh, what Bureau One Diet is, what Orbis is, and then, you know some of the great stuff that they are doing within their organization. Tom. Yeah. Thanks, Gaurav, and thanks, Chris, for having me, and I hope everyone's having a nice Wednesday. Um, so I'm just going to touch on Bureau Van Dyke, uh, Moody's Analytics company, very quickly. Um, so Moody's Analytics acquired Bureau Van Dyke in August of 2017. This union means we can create the best products available on the market, including the Orbis database. With considerable investments in data collection and delivery, we're able to offer very detailed and accessible solutions. Can you go to the next slide, Gaurav? Yeah. Thank you. And sorry, I try to keep it short and simple here. Um, so what does Bureau Van Dyke do? So these solutions involve capturing and treating private company information for better decision-making and increased efficiency. We help you make better, faster decisions. Leveraging a network of over 180 different information providers, we standardize, harmonize, and link the information on over 425 million companies across all countries. This includes one and a half billion ownership links. We are the resource for company data, especially data on private companies. And then I have two key benefits. So a key benefit of the information is how simple we make it to compare companies internationally, as well as the corporate ownership structures. Um, and we can, you know, as we go through, touch on these at a later time or when there's questions. Um, but now I'll pass it back over to Grav to talk specifically about the data enrichment with Bureau Van Dyke. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> thanks, Tom, for the introduction. Um, so moving on, you know, let, let's talk about what we provide as part of the data enrichment capability. Um, so there are three or four aspects that we cover, right? First is the, the data governance itself. So um, again, this you, you can find parallels with our DNB connected as well. Uh, but what we are doing over here is basically trying to find that unique record uh, based on certain criteria uh, that you defined um, and, and search for those records in uh, in the Orbis database and then match those records within the organize, organization profile, right? The next thing that you would obviously want to do is enrich that customer or organization data with the trusted information that's available uh, in the database. And this, this can be done either through click of a button, uh, which is through our, the on-demand offering, uh, through a batch process, or even we have a, a real-time uh, process as well uh, and you know something that i'll cover in, in some detail uh, later in the slides as well right so with with enrichment you get a, a lot of different kinds of information around uh you know the, the company details like the industry the corporate hierarchy the firmographics as well as the demographic information right and that also uh, you know the corporate hierarchy building piece is is part of uh, the enrichment as well and finally, uh, you know, the entire integration has been built on top of our Relgio integration hub or cap capability, right? So that you get that self-service monitoring as well as the troubleshooting capabilities available right there for you to kind of monitor what's going on within those um, those integrations, right? Um, so here is a high-level architecture of uh, you know how the how the things work. Um, so the, the Orbis database provides certain set of APIs that we have integrated with both for match as well as for um, enrichment, right? 
for batch as well as for real time uh, um, operations we have the um, the jobs running which would pick up the records from relio match it against orbis and then get the enrichment information available directly into your um, tenant i mean the customer tenant i mean over here and if you are using the on demand or the ui based match and enrichment in in such cases there is a requirement of using the data tenant which would host uh the the potential matches or which would act like a staging area um you know for all the the matches that are found in that database for you to kind of look at that and uh, based on your judgment include that as part of your enrichment right so on a high level there are these these are the, some of the components that you would need um from the subscriptions uh, subscription side obviously uh, our customers need to um license the the apis directly from bureau mandike for the for the obvious products uh, right and as well as from the relio side uh, there are additional subscriptions required um, you know if you want to build that integration or use the uh, the bureau mandike integration and this would also include the rih um, subscription also or the relio integration hub subscription as well right um so moving on uh, as i mentioned relio integration hub is the, is the backbone of this integration um since since all these recipes are available out of the box there are certain set of uh, you know mappings available but then uh, you can modify those those recipes once it's available in your environment to kind of capture uh you know business transformations or change the transformation logic mapping logic you could do that within the recipes that are installed in your environment right and then you can obviously schedule jobs uh run in real time mode accessing the data from your queue and then uh, obviously monitor the the jobs um uh, using the relative integration hub uh dashboards right um so this is this this is the way we have kind of eased out building the or customizing the configurations that you might be required to build out uh, or use this integration in in your environment okay. so now the real crux of uh, you know what are the different modes of operation that are available right so one is the on demand uh, which is through the relio hub ui and these are specifically targeted towards the data steward Users, users who want to kind of have a a manual approach of looking at the records, finding out the accurate information, and then uh, you know building out that that profile with that uh, accurate data for the organizations, right? So for that, uh, we provide uh, the uh, the UI uh, or the actions on the UI for them to be able to search or match the records against an Orbis or uh, database. and then also get the details once the uh, orbis identifier is available in the in the profile and this is what i'm going to show as part of the uh, of the demo right apart from this we also support uh, the real time use cases in which uh, what happens is as and when your data gets created in uh, in the relio profile um the connector picks up those records from the the relio queues and then matches those records uh against the database uh, of orbis right so this is an automated process there is no need for having somebody to look at those records and do a, a, a manual match or uh, and 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 enrich it right so right now with with the real time use case you can do just the match and uh, obviously get the potential matches out of that but then the next step uh, of enriching those records is still a manual process because uh we we thought that the data steward may want to look at the uh the the potential matches uh, that are available and then based on the confidence level or the analysis that they do they can select whether or not they want to go ahead and do that enrichment for that profile or uh, you know skip that profile right lastly we we have the batch mode as well this is more of a scheduled job or a program which would take the data in bulk from your relio uh, environment push that push those records to bvd find out the uh, the identifier as well as enrich those records and then pull back or push those records enrich records back into uh, relio right so this this is 
specifically for those use cases wherein the customers want to do on a periodic basis match and enrichment uh, and if they have done that initial match and enrichment and they want to do a periodic updates on a regular basis then the the batch mode would be suitable for for those customers or for those use cases right hey, Karav, um, quick question yeah. so Yes. With real time, is there a way to ensure it is Orbis process before any other match rule would be considered? So ask is around negative match rules based on this data, similar to the DNB? Yeah, it's a, it's a good question. Um, so the, the way we have designed right now, the way we think it should ideally work is when you bring in the data into Relgio, uh, you should let Relgio do all the, the match um, against the existing records in the uh, what you have right now uh, within the Relgio profile, right? Uh, cleanse that record, obviously cleanse would happen before the, the matching so that once you have that enriched or let's say uh, quote unquote uh, operational values identified uh, within the Relgio profile and then you should go and do that real time matching against BVD because at the end of the day, BVD uh, would give you that clean data, right? Uh, which would enrich those records and you don't want to kind of pass on uh, unclean data or you know unmerged data or let's say ins insufficient data to, to, be, to be enriched, right? So right now we do it at the end uh, as and when the record gets created uh, or matched uh, against the, the relative profiles. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Are we allowed to ask a question as you speak? Uh, go, or we, we... go for it, Louis. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, because, um, and we had same with uh, Dense and Bread Street uh, API enrichment, where when you deal with very massive amounts of data, um, never it will be completely clean. So whether it is with putting Dense ID or the BVD identifier, um, you will always have some records with the same uh, duplicate dunce or duplicate BVD identifier. And uh, we should not, by default, build the feature by saying they should automatically be merged if they have the same BVD identifier, because we actually had a big issue with that. Uh, so if you can take it into account as part of the product that uh, um, uh, at least you should offer the option to, to say, uh, okay, either uh, you decide that account with same BVD identifier would be automatically merged, or you uncheck this box so it does not happen. Uh, so I think, you know, small volume, maybe your data is perfect. You can afford <laughs> to have auto merge, mm -hmm. but huge volume of record, uh, it will not be possible. Uh, so. Uh, yeah, does it make sure. sense what I'm explaining? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So now, now that you know, you clarify the uh, your your requirements, I can you know mention that since these um, you know integration are available through Relgio Integration Hub, right? When you deploy these integration in your environment, you have complete control on how you want to uh, you know match and merge those records from uh, from Orbis into uh, your profile, right? Um, if you if you don't want to do an auto merge, you can configure or change the the recipes as we call it, or the integration uh, flows to to not do that, right? So everything goes into suspect match. So there is flexibility available for you to uh, to modify those integration rules, uh, you know, as per your requirements. It's it's not stringent, but something that we Give out out of the box is is what I just mentioned, but there is enough flexibility available for you to make those changes uh, in your environment. Okay, um, Chris, are there any other questions, or I can jump on to the? the demo. No, uh, we did say that's exactly we need, what we need going forward. Thank you. Okay, that's great. Okay, so um, let me jump on to the demo now and uh, see if I can uh, you know, show things in. in, in we love demo, demos, so, Grof, so this is awesome. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so now uh, I'm on to Relgio profile. Right now you can see DHL Express, um, and this is our um, uh, hub UI, as we call it, within Relgio, which, which is where a data steward would typically work building that golden record or uh, you know, building that single source of truth for, for different types of entity profiles, right? So in this case, let's say I'm DHL Express, I'm using uh, this tool to kind of enrich the, these records, right? And I just have name and address, and this is this is where I can start building out this profile if, if I wish, right? Uh, so I've just created this record, uh, and there are a couple of actions that you see on the top right corner, DVD match and DVD details. This is completely configurable uh, in your environment, right? Uh, you can place these records in, in, in somewhere here or on the right hand side, it's, it's all flexible or uh, you can de define how we want to, uh, you know, this these actions to, to look like, right? So the first thing that I do is DVD match, which is where we look for this organization in the office database by passing certain parameters like DHL, the, the name and the address. Um, by, by default, we give name um, as well as address, and there are a couple of more attributes around phone number as well as uh, email. So these are the four different attributes that go uh, as a search criteria, right? But not all are mandatory. Uh, name and address are of course required, right? So as you can see, there are just one match that we found in in that database, right? And since there's only one match, this will be automatically merged, right? But had it been more than one match, and within the threshold of the uh, the match score, it would appear in your potential matches screen. And I can cover that um, as well uh, with, with a different record or an existing record, right? So in this case, when I do this, um, as you can see, it's it's been automatically matched, uh, uh, matched as well as merged. And you can see that the BVD identifier is located, right? So BVD identifier is the, the unique identification that, um, that that is assigned uh, to, to all the organization profiles that reside in the office database, right? And now as, as next step, we use this as, as a tool to kind of enrich the, the, these records with, with additional data, right? Um, there's a match confidence score of one, right? And because there, there was an exact match based on the, uh, the address, um, I believe, right? But, uh, to, to give you some more details around the confidence code. So um, as part of the BVD or rather the, the obvious API response, right, you, you get matched scores for, uh, for all the matched uh, entities, right? And in the configuration right now, what we have done is for all the match scores, which are higher than 0.8, right? Match score is, is between zero and one, right? And in this case, uh, for every record which has a match score of 0.8, it will be identified as a, as a potential match and be uh, recorded in the in the data tenant, so to speak, uh, for a data steward to look at. Right. Uh, however, if if there is a, a match with the confidence code of one, right, it will be automatically merged. Uh, but then, the, as I mentioned, this is this is configurable. Uh, you can make these changes in your recipes if you don't want that auto merge to happen uh, for, for a confidence code of one. Right. Um, so the next step for me is to you know get more details, enrich these records, for example, build out the hierarchy um, and then get some details around industry code and, and things like that. Right. So uh, I do a BVD get details and this, this basically takes up the uh, identifier over here pushes that record to uh, Orbis and then we get the, uh, the enrichment records. Right? And once you get the enriched records, um, you will see additional details coming in. For example, the industry information has come in. Um, there's an activation date, but this activation date is currently mapped to the incorporation date. So you know, think of this as an incorporation date. And then there should have been details around the employee's information but it didn't show up, right? Um, the other thing that comes up is the hierarchy. Right? So if I quickly refresh my screen and you'll see that um, the hierarchy gets built up, right? And here also we have recorded that um, the global mail 
corporation is is a headquarter, uh, and then we have a global ultimate available, which is Deutsche Post. Post, right? So this is how you can also get the details of the hierarchy, and then you can basically jump onto the various records and then uh, you know enrich those if, if you if you like. Hey, Grav. Okay. I have yeah. kind of a request. Could you please show how does the integration handle any data model changes in BVD? Also, can you show how uh, are deletions in BVD handled in merged records in RealTO? Is that going to be done today or those two? Um, so maybe I can show the integration uh, piece, but not the deletion piece, because I, I believe for deletion, um, uh, the, the, I, I don't have the records. <laughs> ready or set up for that plus uh, you know the way it would work is that you have the scheduled uh, jobs right which go and look for those uh, those matches to be available uh, based on the the bvd id right and if there are uh, you know such deletions happening then in, in such cases um, i believe those records would be indicated as as deleted as part of the vendor verification status or one of these um, statuses Right. But then um, what I can do is through the community, um, you can pose this question and uh, we can you know, get into the details as to how the deletion uh, is, is handled, right? And I believe the other question was related to the, um, to the integration piece, right? So I believe the ask was to- uh, Yeah, it says, to could you please show how, to, how does the integration handle any data model changes in BVD? Okay, um, yeah, let me bring this up, but then this would just be uh, something specifically for this use case. Uh, just give me a second, I'm just opening this up. This is part of our Relge integration hub offering, right? And um, as part of that, what you get is a set of recipes, or as we call it, or a set of, yeah, integration flows. If you want to be more generic, right? And this this is uh, already part of your uh, tenants, so to speak, right? So now what you see over here is uh, are a bunch of recipes that are active, right? And these are all uh, used for the on-demand or, or the UI-based um, integration, right? So in this case, there are multiple recipes, and what we um I'm using for enrichment is this particular recipe, um, and I can you know, show our latest record as well. But this is the this is the integration, right? And what it does is this this recipe gets called from uh, another recipe. But um, to give you a brief, what happens is we we map the data over here. So this is where we are passing the the unique identifier for enrichment, right? Um, here's the API call that happens, right? And finally, once we get the, the result of this API, we loop through these APIs and then formulate uh, a bunch of uh, you know, records that needs to be posted into uh, RELQ, right? So if, if there are any changes that needs to be done to the API, uh, you know, to, the, to the attribute, right? You can come to, into these recipes and make uh, those changes, right? So for example, uh, in, in this API, you would see that uh, there is a certain response structure that comes in, right? So right now, if you see the response, those are coming in or configured for, for, for that matter into this recipe is the name, the ID, uh, and, and a set of other attributes, right? So the tax ID, uh, the, the incorporation date that we touched upon, and as well as the, um, the industry codes, right? And this data is then being, uh, you know, processed over here, and finally uh, it gets posted into Relgio through the Relgio uh, um, action. So there's a create organization in bulk action that we call um, within the RIH recipes, and this would basically push all the uh, the the records, right? Whether it's the the actual data that is getting enriched or the actual record that is getting enriched. Um, if, if there are any parent organization like the, the headquarters or a global ultimate, those are also part of the uh, this creation process. And this is how we actually build the, the recipes. Does that answer your question? 
Um, Rob, if you want to just say yes, no. Um, a couple more questions, though. To see enrichment, do mm -hmm. we need to merge a record with BBD record? Yeah, so as part of the enrichment process, um, you know, we bring in a lot of other information like the hierarchy, the industry codes. Uh, if you want the financial information, you, you can add financial information. There's employee details available. Uh, and, and Tom can talk about uh, in, in detail what all different kinds of firmographic information that are available in, in their database, right? So all those are the, the real enrichment data that you may want to bring in as part of the uh, get BVD details, right? The initial match that we do using just the name, the address, or maybe even the phone and email address or the website is just to identify uh, the unique identifier in that uh, in the Orbis database. Right? And then it makes it easier to get that enrichment information uh, from the database. And this this also allows a data steward to look at the potential matches, uh, you know, that that might be available. Uh, so, for example. If, if let's say DHL Express had multiple matches over there, right? So in that case, the data steward can come onto this in, onto the screen and identify the right record that they want to use uh, or that they want to you know, build the profile out of. Uh, but Prab, I, I think the question, uh, if it's the one that Muriel was asking in the chat, yeah. is more after when you put the, if you go back to the screen before, when you get the details, so if you go to BVD detail, then in the background mm -hmm. that would create a crosswalk BVD that would bring the data of uh, BVD and then mm -hmm. merge it with a crosswalk of DHL Express, which will result in showing the data uh, on the screen, correct? Correct, yes. So, um, you know, when you, when you do an initial uh, match, right? there is this um, crosswalk that gets created because you are bringing additional details from Euro Van Dijk. Uh, we, we create these uh, crosswalks to, to be able to uniquely identify these records for further enrichment. Mm. Okay. Thank you, Muriel. I think that was your question, right? So just check. Okay. Yeah, and Muriel, you know, feel free to add or, what, yeah, he said it is. So the other question, and we'll we continue on, does BVD use data tenant concepts similar to the DNB? Uh, right now, yes, for the on-demand uh, enrichment, we do leverage the, the data tenants. Uh, approach because we don't want to kind of uh, populate data into the customer tenant uh, unless it is absolutely required and we, we kind of leave that decision to our customers um, right so data tenant is is important to be able to you know work through the potential matches that you want to bring into your uh, customer tenants that's all the questions for now thank you okay um yeah, so uh, Chris, that's that's what I had as well. I mean, I did not plan to go into more details around this, give an overview of and, and see if there are any interests uh, for customers to kind of start uh, looking into it. And if, if we have like follow-up that needs to be done, I'm happy to you know do those follow-ups on a one-on-one -on -one basis, one -on -one basis as well. Great. If there's something that... Uh group is interested in, you know, and um, looking more in detail, let me know and or your CSM. Certainly, we'll make sure uh, that we follow up with you guys. This is uh, thank you so much, Tom and Gaurav, for your time today. Uh, we hope to go a little bit deeper at some point uh, within this, but uh, hopefully you guys liked it. And coming up in April, we will have an Ask Me Anything with Manish soon. He's our founder and CTO, so that's going to be a lot of fun. We did it last year. And there's a lot of interest in that. And so we'll do it again, again, giving away swag. And we do have a case study in a sense on how Empire Life is using um, um, RELTO, MDM, and you know, some, and he'll, they'll talk about some of the uh, business outcomes and how they use it and a bunch of other really cool stuff that will be in May. And I'm also working on a show around um, the cleanser. We had an overview 
not so long ago, but you guys wanted to go deeper. So I'm pushing Prasad uh, to get the details around that. So if you guys have any other um, suggestions, one, you know, please push those in the chat or let me know directly uh, on topics that you're interested in. Two, um, if you're interested in doing a community show uh, to talk a little bit about, could be around RailTO MDM, could it be around, you know, how to build a data governance program or, you know, something that you uh, have done really well. I'm interested in talking to you. And I know this group is interested to hearing from you around some of these shows. So that's all for today. If you have any questions, please let me know. Put in the chat if you liked it or, you know, uh, maybe a suggestion on other shows and things like that. So thank you, everyone. I'm going to stay on for another couple of minutes. Again, Tom, thanks so much for coming. Gaurav, thanks again. I get I get to stay on for a second too if lower so, I, I see yeah I've yeah. just put this question in the chat because we actually so today we we use the DNB data uh, quite a lot and we are exploring uh, Bureau Van Dyke data we know that in our company our credit management team use the Bureau Van Dyke data, but we have not yet explored to what extent, et cetera, et cetera. So my question here is more from a, a business perspective, a functional perspective. Usually, uh, what additional data or where Bureau Van Dyke could be uh, better or, or different from the data you would get from Duns and Bradstreet? Mm -hmm. No, it's a, it's a good question. Um, do you, Gaurav, do you maybe want to take the question from John about the BVD data updated in the tenant? And then I think the question between us and Dunn and Bradstreet and the, uh, you know, kind of differentiators could be a bit longer maybe than that one. Um, but I'm, I'm happy to speak about that today. Maybe if we just answer the, the other question first. Yeah, sure. Um, so I can take that question around uh, how BVD data is updated. So as I covered in the presentation as well, there are three aspects that we have. Um, uh, one is through the data stewardship uh, operations, like uh, doing a get match as well as um, the get details. And behind the scenes, we have the um, the integration pros or the recipes running on top of Relge Integration Hub, uh, which kind of process, transform that data, call the, uh, the Orbis APIs, uh, you know, get the response from the Orbis APIs, transform that data back into relative format, and then feed that data into, uh, into the tenants, right? Uh, we do use uh, the data tenant uh, in, in cases uh, where there are multiple potential matches available for data steward to have that easier uh, selection of entities, right? Uh, for the real-time operation, as well as for the batch operations, we do not require uh, the data tenants. It's automated completely. And through the API calls that we make through uh, to, to Orbis, uh, as well as the response that we get from Orbis, we feed that data into the tenants through our current integration hub recipes. Um, I, John, I, I hope I've been able to answer that question for you. Or if you have any Clarifications required. I can do that. I don't, I don't know. I, he might have left. Oh, no, he's still there. So if you oh, have any additional there. stuff, uh, John, let, let us know. And if you want to take the other one, Tom, I think we're good. Okay. I have idea. So I, I would, you know, Loke, we could always set up an additional time for a lot of slides and, and PowerPoint stuff. But I'd say in terms of us and Dun and Bradstreet, our corporate ownership and the international coverage in a sense, is really what differentiates us. And when you think about trade credit and why your team's probably using Bureau Van Dyke, it's we have over 180 different information providers, whether it's like a COFAS in France or a Servet in Italy or some of these niche providers that are well-respected and honestly kind of have a stronghold on some of the data in, in certain countries. And what we do in, in standardizing and harmonizing and linking all of this data is we're able to have 10 levels of hierarchy down to 0.01% in ownership. And it's not something that's just being taken from, let's say like, you know, and I'm, I'm never, I never get on calls to, you know, knock anybody or when you go into differentiators, but I feel like 
DMB is very good from getting like credit, it, like credit bureau data and like the secretary of state and some of the U S data. Um, they're very good at getting granular on, but when you think of, you know, a, across the globe and, and kind of the, the coverage that Bureau Van Dyke and Orbis, and that, that's another thing I didn't want to get too much into this call is that Orbis is one of, you know, probably 40 or so products that Bureau Van Dyke has um, along with Moody's and some of those data assets. So I think it's really just the, the depth and breadth of coverage and the ability to crosswalk different jurisdictions in different countries. So if you think about it, if, you know, we all know filing requirements are different, you know, country by country. So if let's say one country isn't required to file um, who their, you know, owners are, but the country that the owners are in is required to file who they own, we're able to make links where if, you know, let's say you weren't collecting data in Cyprus or the Bahamas or, you know, British Virgin Islands, you might miss a link. So that's what you see typically in, you know, some of the providers like a, like a UK's company's house or an Equifax, who's also a partner of ours, but it's in, in the certain jurisdiction or area, they're very good. But as soon as you get out of that jurisdiction, you lose that kind of sight on the ownership, you know, from that country. So I think that's what we do a really good job at um, maintaining and, and keeping up to date and, and refreshing. I mean, the amount of corporate action changes and different ownership changes we have on a weekly, monthly and yearly basis is <laughs> it's a lot. And I'm, ha I'm happy to go into that a bit further with you, um, Loic. But is that did that help at all or was that, you know, my my attempt at a pitch. Yeah, no, no, it's very, thank you so much for your honest answer. And uh, I, I know it deviated a bit from the technical topic today of the interface, but it's a very good answer. I appreciate your insight, uh, Tom. Thank you. Yeah, yeah no, all right. no problem. Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Luke, for all your questions today. Um, so that concludes today's uh, show. So thank you, everyone. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Have a nice day, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gaurav. Thanks, Chris.